the Kamchatka Peninsula has shuddered once again. In the early hours of October the 4th, a magnitude 6.1 earthquake struck roughly 173 kilometers, or about 107 miles, southeast of Vilyushinsk, at a depth of 17.4 kilometers, or around 11 miles. While the shaking was felt moderately on land, the larger question looms. Are these mid-sized shocks mere precursors of something far greater? Could the relentless grinding at the Kamchatka Trench set the stage for a magnitude 9 megathrust event, capable of unleashing devastation across the Pacific? To understand the urgency of this question, one must look not only at the numbers, but also at the deeper forces hidden beneath the seafloor. The Kamchatka Trench is not an isolated fault line. It is the northern reach of the great Kuril-Kamchatka subduction system, where the immense Pacific Plate relentlessly plunges beneath the Okots microplate, which itself is part of the broader North American plate boundary. Every day, centimeter by centimeter, roughly three to four inches per year, the oceanic lithosphere dives downward, releasing vast amounts of strain energy in the form of earthquakes. But when the accumulated stress locks for decades or centuries, the eventual release can come in catastrophic bursts. The recent sequence illustrates this escalating energy. On September the 13th, a magnitude 7.4 struck 111 kilometers, or 69 miles, east of Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, at nearly 40 kilometers depth, or 25 miles. Just six days later, on September the 19th, another violent jolt, magnitude 7.8, ruptured 127 kilometers, or 79 miles, east of the city this time much shallower at only 19.5 kilometers, or about 12 miles. That second quake generated modified Merkali intensities up to nine, capable of severe ground shaking. Both were strong reminders of the trench's restless nature. Following those major quakes, the region has not fallen quiet. Instead, it has churned with aftershocks and sympathetic ruptures including a magnitude 4.7 at 10 kilometers depth, or about 6 miles southeast of Vilyuchinsk, a 5.3 at 10 kilometers depth further east, and another 4.7 east of Ozanovsky at 43 kilometers deep, or 27 miles. The October 4th magnitude 6.1, followed within minutes by a 5.1 at 35 kilometers depth, or 22 miles, and then a 4.7 at 10 kilometers, reveals a tightly clustered swarm near the southeast offshore zone. This cluster, striking repeatedly along similar coordinates, points to stress transfer along adjacent patches of the subduction interface. What exactly drives this chain reaction of seismicity? At the heart of it lies the mechanism of megathrust earthquakes. Along a subduction zone, two contrasting materials interact. The cold, dense oceanic lithosphere of the Pacific Plate and the comparatively buoyant continental or microplate crust above. Where the slab descends, it does not slide smoothly. Instead, vast patches of the interface become locked by friction. These locked segments may span hundreds of kilometers or hundreds of miles in length and tens of kilometers or several miles in width. As the Pacific Plate pushes downward at rates of eight to nine centimeters per year, roughly three and a half inches, the overriding crust warps and flexes, bending like a loaded spring. Over time, elastic strain accumulates until the interface fails catastrophically, causing the overriding plate to lurch seaward and upward. This sudden release is the essence of a megathrust rupture, the kind that can register magnitude nine or higher and spawn basin-wide tsunamis. 
The magnitude 6.1 event, though moderate compared to the trench's potential, occurred in precisely the sort of shallow depth zone that megathrust ruptures nucleate. At 17 kilometers depth, or 11 miles, it lies within the seismogenic zone, where brittle failure dominates and elastic rebound is most violent. The clustering of quakes from 10 to 35 kilometers depth, or 6 to 22 miles, southeast of Vilyuchinsk, suggests that multiple asperities, or locked patches, are shifting and possibly cascading stress to one another. While such sequences do not guarantee a giant quake, they often serve as preludes in regions with a history of large ruptures. Kamchatka's record is sobering. In November 1952, the trench unleashed a magnitude 9 event, one of the largest recorded in the 20th century. That rupture tore through an enormous section of the interface, sending tsunami waves across the Pacific. Modern GPS and seismic networks indicate that strain has once again been accumulating at comparable rates. The question scientists now wrestle with is whether the recent seven-point range earthquakes are sufficient to relieve significant stress, or if they merely represent smaller breaks around an as-yet unruptured locked segment primed for a megathrust. The mechanism at play can be visualized like a series of interlinked gears under tension. One segment slips, transferring torque to its neighbor. A 7.4 and 7.8 release strain, but only across localized fault patches. Adjacent areas may in fact be further loaded, their stress concentration heightened by the redistribution. The subsequent swarm of fours, fives and sixes may be indicators of this cascading process. Earthquakes are rarely isolated. They belong to a dynamic web of interactions where every rupture subtly reconfigures the stress field for hundreds of kilometers or hundreds of miles around. Complicating the picture is the role of depth and slab geometry. The Pacific Plate bends steeply beneath Kamchatka, descending at an angle sharper than 45 degrees. This steepness creates dual zones of seismicity, shallow interplate quakes along the megathrust interface and deeper intraslab events where the downgoing plate fractures internally. The September 19th quake at 19 kilometers or 12 miles was a clear interplate event while the earlier September 13th quake at nearly 40 kilometers or 25 miles may straddle the transitional zone. The October swarm, clustered between 10 and 35 kilometers, shows that both shallow and mid-depth layers are active simultaneously. This layered activity complicates forecasts, for it suggests stress is not confined to a single depth but distributed vertically through the slab. Seismologists often debate whether such sequences herald a larger rupture or instead represent a gradual dissipation. Historically, many magnitude 9 events have been preceded by months or even years of foreshocks. The 2011 Tohoku Oki quake in Japan, which reached magnitude 9.1, was preceded by a series of magnitude 7 events in the preceding decade, culminating in a magnitude 7.3 just two days before the main shock. Kamchatka's current activity bears unsettling resemblance, with its own 7.4 and 7.8 occurring in quick succession only weeks ago. Still, not all clusters culminate in disaster. Some dissipate without a major rupture, relieving enough stress incrementally to delay the inevitable by decades. Yet the core truth remains. In a system as immense and restless as the Kamchaka Trench, the eventual recurrence of a magnitude 9 is not a matter of if, but when. The Pacific Plate does not cease its relentless advance, and each centimetre it drives beneath the Okots microplate stores energy for future release. 
the latest 6.1 shock is thus both a warning and a reminder. It underscores the trench's capacity for repeated, shallow, seismogenic ruptures. It highlights how stress is migrating across fault patches, perhaps preparing the ground for a larger break. And it prompts a haunting question. Has the countdown to the next megathrust already begun? Communities along the Russian Far East, as well as across the wider Pacific, remain at the mercy of this subterranean tug-of-war. For now, seismologists will continue to pass the aftershock patterns, the geodetic shifts, and the strain maps, hoping to discern whether the trench is winding down or winding up. But one truth cannot be ignored. The Kamchatka Trench has awakened again, and in its restless grinding lies the ever-present possibility of the next great magnitude nine. If you found this deep dive into the mechanics of the Kamchatka Trench insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more. And tap that hype icon to help this video reach a wider audience because understanding these geological forces could one day save lives.